a new phenomenon has struck humanity. It corresponds exactly to the quality of the time in which we live. The question is, why do tens of thousands of men in the Western world want to give away their hard-earned money and wealth to women who are completely unknown to them? All this without receiving or expecting any kind of compensation? In fact, all the recompense these men receive is nothing but deep contempt, mockery and rejection. How do they find each other and who are these so-called goddesses who demand all the property of their so-called subjects and take it from them without any hesitation? How do these characters interact with each other? How does the whole process work? How do men get to the point where they slowly lose everything they own? And they do all this in the virtual space, in exchange for a soulless illusion that they are only allowed to experience for a few minutes and to which they become completely addicted in a short time? A strange subculture that is completely devoid of any rationality. The whole phenomenon is based on a mental compulsion that the average person barely knows and may not even have heard of. A phenomenon that only very few can understand. The story began about 25 years ago in the United States and very soon it arrived and spread in Western Europe, but especially in Germany. First of all, let's see who this so-called subject is, who longs for plunder. We need to define what this special addiction is in this case. What is this persistent and escalating pattern of behavior that has increasingly negative consequences for the person? In most cases, the so-called subject is completely lost in the process of dedication. Over time, this results in complete emotional distancing from loved ones and the complete loss of friendships and family relationships. Finally, a state of total solitude is reached. From there, the person becomes a complete victim of their exploiter or goddess. The person who also lives in constant fear. Shame and guilt increase as the addict's lifestyle is no longer aligned with their personal values and spirituality. The development of total despair is inevitable as the addiction progresses. On which social platform does this extremely low vibration, destructive relationship between the so-called goddess and the so-called subject begin? Well, in the majority of cases, this social interface is usually Twitter. There are an incredible amount of these dubious characters on Twitter. There are plenty of goddesses promoting themselves in an unimaginably decadent and arrogant way. But Instagram is also a popular place to get in touch. A so-called goddess must always present herself as completely unattainable and unapproachable, highly intelligent and always right. She is the higher level or the highest level being whose company cannot be earned by anyone. No one can exist in the company of the goddess who does not honor this in an appropriate way. Earning your company comes with serious financial compensation. The characteristic of the goddess is that all her words are laws and the person who lives according to her laws and who can sacrifice his material possessions on the altar of the goddess can be happy. What are the real motivations behind making contact? For the feminine side, the motivation is nothing but money. The participants of the feminine side are, in a large percentage of cases, infinitely vain, soulless, merciless and immoderate persons who themselves struggle with a huge mental disorder. Of course, this is never shown. They shouldn't show such a thing, as it would destroy the image. Most goddesses are victims of serious addictions and are more losers than winners in everyday life. Well, as far as motivation is concerned, we can't talk about a different thinking or a different approach. 
In all cases, the motivation is financial. Nor can we say that the person of the subject means anything to the feminine side. The goal is solely to obtain the subject's money and goods and to make the subject completely dependent. And with all this in mind, the question arises, what could be the other party's motivation? The motivation of the self-sacrificing party? The subject's motivation? What can be the motivation of a man who really gets nothing from such a relationship? And not only does he get nothing, but he is a downright loser for this relationship? Someone who puts money at the feet of an unknown woman? Money that he himself did not earn easily and that he needs for his own survival? And all this in virtual space? Without ever having the chance or opportunity to meet the goddess of his dreams in person? Why does he put himself, of his own free will, in such a degrading and servile role? What is shocking and what is infinitely sad about all of this is that it is not just a few of these people. Countless such victims search for their master and exploiter every day on the internet and, as I said, especially on the Twitter social platform. I am talking about tens of thousands, or even more, of people who are captivated by this morbid and destructive compulsion, and it seems that not only are they powerless to get out of this circle, but they are sinking deeper and deeper into it and there will be more and more of them. These men seek contact with their exploiters entirely of their own free will. They send their bank card to their owner of their own free will. Of their own free will, they trust someone who is absolutely not worthy of this, but despises them as a person. They lose everything of their own free will. And when they can no longer give anything, when they can no longer bring any benefit to the goddess, then they lose their importance and become uninteresting in the eyes of the goddess. The goddess then simply throws them away. She cuts off contact with them and doesn't communicate with them anymore. Then they become a real nobody and a real loser. They, on the other hand, in their desperation and dependence on the goddess, will do anything to make themselves valuable again. They want to be useful again. They would like to serve again. This is when the point comes when they go to the bank and take out a loan. If they don't get a loan, they create private debt for themselves. If that doesn't work either, they look for a second job. They do all this so that they can once again serve and reconnect with the goddess. The complete absurdity of the matter is that all this is not a secret to any of the participants. The goddess openly states at the beginning of the relationship that she is only interested in the subject's money and has no qualms about ruining the subject's life. She also openly tells him that she doesn't care if there is a wife or a family in the background. Because she is the only person who matters. Only her and no one else. She must be the absolute center of the subject's life and the meaning of his life. Her word is law and every wish is a sacrament. Everything else can only be secondary. Can we see what this is? It obviously has nothing to do with free will. This is the playground of irrationality and total delusion. This has absolutely nothing to do with true joy. And if we think that the goddess is in a better state spiritually, we are wrong. This game, no matter how it looks, is played exclusively between losers. Both parties are suffering from severe mental disorders. It would be best if neither Twitter nor other social applications gave the opportunity for this humanly destructive activity to spread. And if you, who are watching this, are affected by yourself as a subject, then let me tell you something encouraging. Overcoming addiction can be a very difficult thing in most cases. But what you need to know is that it can work. If your life is full of despair and pain, know that there is a way out and you can return to the life you lived before. You don't have to be strong every day. You just have to recognize the danger zones and do something that goes against the addiction. You will feel that you are improving. With small steps, but you will improve. You have to motivate yourself to keep going. Reward yourself for every step you take 
starting with looking at the following things. Your goddess lied to you. The truth is that she is not a goddess, but a real loser. A loser who was mean to you. She misled you. You became delusional, you betrayed yourself and you became impure, tormented by remorse, tormented by despair. You didn't need anyone else. You didn't need your own spirit. Why would you need your spirituality, since you could live in the glory of a real goddess? But it was all an illusion and a delusion. Mazes of the mind. So please notice who you have been in contact with and who has spoken to you. She wanted to ruin your life. And you begged her to do it. You were nothing to her. Now be yourself and say no. You can overcome your addiction. What do you need? You need new goals now. At least one goal that motivates you, something you can deal with from the heart, something that captures your attention. In which you can be successful. Which gives you something. And if you're alone, you need a partner. Being alone and lonely is not good for you. You need a partner who you can do for, who respects you and who you respect. A partner with whom you experience different activities. Common goals are very good. And start on the path of true self-knowledge. Start now.